Hello. Sweet. Okay. Really? Give that a shot. All righty. Do, 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 do. We'll give everybody a few minutes to show up. May touch up a few places here that have rubbed off since we're been going for super long here. I'm ready for this figure to be done. I don't know about you guys, but 
ready to be done with this one. <laughs> Give anybody a couple of moments to show up. If you're here, then drop online, drop a note, and let me know you're here. <laughs> Give anybody a moment here to show up if they're going to show up, and we will get started. I do hope everybody's being safe out there tonight, doing well. It's kind of a crazy night, crazy times rather. All righty. We got anybody, anybody? All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started here, I think, because I think this one's gonna take a little while. Um, we're going to be working on the leather today and finishing up anything else that needs to be finished up. So we're going to get rolling. We're going to start out. Um, you're going to want your, your triad here that I think it's autumn colors or whatever. It's the russet brown, harvest brown, and I think this is orange brown. Um, this is one of my most used triads for leather. I like it a lot. Um, I'm just putting some out on the palette here. We're going to have to use quite a bit of this brown. Don't be stingy with it. Go ahead and put out a good bit of the harvest brown as well. Really? I swear, these things just clog. Just by looking at them funny, don't they? All just clog today. All right, so we're unclogging our harvest brown. We can go ahead and put our uh, orange brown out as well. Okay. And then we're going to put a little bit of our um, bronze skin tone down because this is basically um, very close to a leather color as well. So we're going to use that as a highlight as well. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of um, linen and white and black down on our palette as well or nightmare black as well just so that we have some to play with do even out my sheet a little better uh what am I it's like where's my pokey tool go <laughs> There we go. A little bit more than I wanted, but all right. Do that. We're going to make sure our wet palette is nice and wet. Just have a squirt bottle here with some water. And I'm just going to squirt it till nice where I want it to be. I like there. So you can tell that instantly made a lot of the bubbles under here going because it just wasn't quite hydrated enough. Alrighty, and then um, I don't think we need a super nice brush to start off with. No, I like using the, the least nice brush that we can get away with usually. Where is my one brush? Where is that? There it is. We're just going to use one of these craft brushes. We're just going to start blocking in. We're going to do all the leather the same color. 
for the sake of ease right now. Um, if we want to, we can kind of tone it different colors afterwards and then we'll figure it out. So let's go ahead and let's do his belt here. And this is just that harvest brown. Be kind of careful here. We don't really want to do redo too much of the skin if we don't have to. So kind of one of my theories when I'm painting um, is that I just got a little bit of brown on there, taking some water. Just kind of rinsing that off. There we go. Um, one of my theories is that I will just go balls to the walls past starting off so that I can get stuff done. And then as we progress, even I'm on camera, as we progress, I just be a little more careful and a little more careful because I don't really want to take forever to paint every figure. All right, so that's, I don't think we're going to need more than one coat on that. I do. Is that, there we go. First, we're not thinning much. We're thinning a little bit, but we're not thinning too much here. So when we come over here, we're going to, Yes, I might need a better brush for this. We'll see. <laughs> We're just getting down in his little ankle here. Uh, just going to hit all of this. With this russet brown, right? Okay, so we've got that. Come up here, let's do all of this up here. There's a bunch of different ways you can paint leather. Leather is one of the easiest things to paint because it looks the best when it's not really smooth adding some texture helps a lot on it okay so because of that it means that your blends don't really have to be perfect you can get away with a lot of things painting leather and just call it you know texture you can be like oh no 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 that's totally intentional that's texture <laughs> Okay. Uh, we'll do his um, ropes a different color. Um, so you don't have to paint those right now. Um, but you don't really have to avoid them either. So just make sure that you get them at least the lines up to them kind of covered. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then we're just coming up here, and down in there, and in there. Okay, that let's do the that's supposed to be having trouble reading. I think this belt actually comes right up there. That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Call. Okay, and then we're going to come up here. This is where we don't want to mess with our wood. We're going to redo our wood right now. It would just not be fun. We don't really want to redo the wood. You need to use a smaller brush so you don't have to redo stuff. By all means, do. 
I use a bigger brush because it allows me to go faster. I also find when I go faster on things, I tend to get smoother coats. Um, I feel like if you use a tiny brush on things, you're kind of asking for the brush to be halfway drying while you're using it, which tends to make things not be as smooth. That's kind of my opinion, at least. But, you know, you never know. Nice thing about paint is kind of everybody's got a different way to paint. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've got all of our brown done, right? So we're going to take, notice I didn't rinse my, oh, sorry. I've just been using russet brown. We're going to take some of our, um, our uh, harvest brown. And I didn't really rinse my brush off. That's okay. Um, this is where you can make yourself not be so putting this on here and I'm just dabbing it off. I don't want it dry brush, but I really don't want the brush super loaded. And then the goal here is to just not be super smooth and just kind of, yeah, just kind of sketch it in. So real light touch. There's enough paint on the brush. We're definitely not dry brushing. We're just not really doing a full coat over it. We're, we're being okay with there being some uneven spots. Same thing here. All right. Make sure I got a good camera angle here. Okay. Because we want that leather to kind of show its texture. I'm not thinning the paint here. I thin the paint here. to make your life harder than it has to be. Right? <laughs> okay. I'm just coming through here. Notice my... my the shape of my brush here is almost like a chisel for a lot of this. It's flattened out. Um, almost like a filbert brush. Okay. And all we're doing is just coming back in here. Starting to establish some of our highlights. Okay. So I've got more paint on the brush here. Coming down and I'm just streaking it over. Right. This is a point where you really don't have to care too much about the inside ankles of his feet. Nobody's ever really going to see that. So I would not, unless this is a showpiece or something, you just really um, really want to do, hey, star, star, star person I don't know. Still trucking along. Um, yeah, you know, just trying to finish this piece up tonight. So, it's been a been a long, kind of paint by paint thing. So it won't take long, I don't think, to finish it up tonight. So we're just doing a little bit of leather. Nothing too fancy. Oh, hey, Kim, gotcha. No, I've just been doing this in real slow, you know, 30 minute segments or something like that. Enough so that people can kind of feel like they don't have to, to devote too much time to it every time. All right, and then we're just going to kind of streak this along here again. We don't have to be super careful about this. Because we're trying to create some texture. Don't have your paint real thin here. It will make your life more difficult. <laughs> the next highlight is where we have to start being a little more careful. Right? Mm. 
right. Thanks, Will. Okay, so I think that's all that. We're going to take our orange bits. This is where, notice I still haven't rinsed out my brush. Taking a little bit of the orange here. I'm doing this. I'm wiping a little bit off over here. I'm not dry brushing. We're just not super loaded. And then we're just going to kind of lightly touch. I have the most wicked glare on my screen. It's killing me. There we go. Um, and we're only going to do this on the upper sides here. We're not going to do the bottom because these are supposed to be highlights, right? Okay, so see what we're doing? We're just adding that little bit of texture in there. Thanks, man. And when we come in here, we're going to do the same. We're just almost a dry brush, but not quite. We're going to make sure that we start to hit. He's got these little crevices. We're going to start focusing more on those and draw some of the attention to the center of his body here. It's going to be a little more. And then same down here. We're going to add just a little down here. You touch something, not a big deal. If you don't, you can always touch up later. All we're doing is just trying to add highlights and visual interest. Keep things going here. We don't really want to add too much under his arm because that wouldn't be highlighted. His arm would block some of the light. We're going to add some back in here. One's a little heavy there. We're going to make sure we catch. This top edge. Oh, got it on the skin. Let's try to get that off. Fortunately, I had to rinse my brush out. That happens though. Okay. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna come back in here. Just gonna make sure we kind of have the top of that ridge highlighted. All right. I'm gonna do kind of under here. A little bit there. We're gonna come down to his feet. We're just going to do just a few streaks down there. Nothing fancy here. The feet, again, are one of the places, like, don't spend a lot of time on. You're not going to reap a lot of benefit from it. Okay. Come up and do this other hand. We'll just... Just streaking a little bit here. Hey, Sam. Hey, Amy. We're just working our way through our brown tones for some leather here. The important part is to, um, as you work up, just kind of streak it a little bit. Don't, don't put down solid coats because we want, because we want that kind of uh, textured look, right? Okay, and then there we go. I can come over. Do a little bit here, a little bit here, here. You can see his leather's starting to come out. We're going to add in a little bit of our uh, flesh tone into that last orange. I think this will be one of our final highlights. We're going to switch to a nicer brush at this point um, with a tip. So I think I'm going to use my Raphael 2. This is going to be some of the flesh tone mixed with some of the um, orange because it makes a much nicer uh, leather highlight. And then we're just going to use... Just little streaks here. We're going to make sure we catch the edges a little bit more than we would. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
and then it's a little bit much so we're going to come back in we're just going to kind of fade in a little bit of our previous color there we go all we're doing is working in the same shades of browns and blacks and or browns and, and skin tones and everything and um just highlighting and making some visual interest here i mean in here i'm catching these folds in his cloth with this color <laughs> we're just making sure that we make it a little interesting here the important thing is to not be too even with this and brush strokes are good in this case we're going to come down here we're just going to add one little streak down here again we do not want a lot of highlights on the feet nobody's going to look down here so we're just going to do that we're going to do a little bit up here a little bit here we can come back and do the ropes later after this any other rope stuff all right we're really going to hit try to focus mainly on the raised edges here and I'm just using this side of my brush and letting it kind of catch those raised edges. If you find at any point, and then we're just going to add just a little bit of. If you find at any point that you've added what you think is too much, we're just catching the raised edges. I would encourage you not to right away just paint over it. Um, let it go until you're about done, and then take some kind of mid-tone and, and do a glaze of it. Um, that's really going to help. We're gonna do our straight flesh tone here and uh, highlight a few places that I like. Might add a little bit of white. Let's go real bright in a few places. That'll help it pop. Just added a little bit of my linen white in. And we're just going to help it. We're just going to give it a little bit of pop in a few places. It'll help sell it. Right? Leather's a little bit shiny. That helps it, helps it out. <laughs> this is where we are going to thin it a little bit. We do want a little bit more control when we're this bright. Right. I'm just coming on catching the edges of things. Just making sure that we're not gonna touch the, the feet down there. Um I'm just gonna add a place or two up here. Just little dots of it. Same up here. Oh that was too much. Alrighty. And then just a few streaks there. Alright. So he's looking pretty good overall. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some of our black, mix it with some of our brown, get that real dark brown. Get that nice and watery, and then we're gonna come and make sure that we've defined a nice line between a few places, like like over in here. We really need there to be good separation between these leathers. So some of these leathers, um, we decided to paint them the same, largely for ease sake. But the problem is that made them kind of run together. So now what we've got to do is kind of unrun them together. And we're just taking, and we're just putting a little dark, right in the line where it separates so that now you can really see those kind of things. I'm gonna reinforce a few of our folds in here. I'm gonna do that down here. This is just making it look like there's some depth there. 
Okay. Um, I don't think I want to do anything down here. I'm going to kind of do this over here, except we're going to come and we're going to um, handle those these things in an entirely different way. And then we're going to do all the little ropes and stuff. What we need to do is make sure there's a clear separation between these bands because they kind of run together a little bit right now. And that's no good. So we're going to mix a little bit of our darker brown that went away. I just got some of this brown with the black mixed. And we're just going to run a line right here. Mainly we want to make sure that that line right there is separate because that's gonna make it look like distinct straps. And then we add that little shadow under there. Same right along these two straps. See where they kind of merge together? We need to make sure that those look separate. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna come down here and we're just gonna add in that dark line there. And that helps a lot on that. So now they look like separate straps instead of straps that kind of you know aren't um all righty i think that may be what we do for the leather let's handle the, the straps now we're going to take our our linen white and our skin tone and we're going to make a real light color we're going to try something for the straps because i'm going to paint most of these little stitches and straps this kind of off-white color that I've got going on here. Don't have to be real careful. Again, some contrast for all this is really good. So what else we got? How about these guys right here? This guy right here. That's a little too stark, but what we're gonna do is we're going to wash these back down afterwards. And that's gonna give us a lot of our thing, a lot of our highlights and shadows um, on these little strappy things without having to spend a whole ton of work. Because otherwise, like, actually painting all these little strappy things is just tedious, guys. I'm not going to lie, I have, for these kind of strappy things, I have used actual, like, GW contrast paints before, because they work really well for this kind of, like, like strappy things. Okay. They, um, you just paint them white, and then you run some of, like, the GW contrast bone or something like that over them, and... You know, it actually looks surprisingly good. I don't know what that is. We'll need to do it. But... <laughs> okay, we'll do that. Make the same color. Great for lacings, yeah. So we're going to add in some of this. All I'm doing is just fitting all these parts with a pretty white color because we're going to come in with a little bit of wash and it's going to darken it up a lot. So we need to start out nice and bright. <laughs> Everybody doing good, staying safe. Going stir crazy. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I think that's all the the strapping kind of things I want to do. And then we're gonna take um let's take some of our brown here. Um, let's 
do something around. Um, let's do like this is the harvest brown. Let's do that. And what? Well, let's mix it up. Let's add a little bit of green in here. Not a lot. Let's see what happens. What's your brown and green make? Have a brownie green? Sure. I'll add a little, quite a bit of water to this. This should be really thin. Okay. Only 20,000 miles. That's it. Okay. I'm going to use kind of a smaller brush than I normally do because I want some control over this. I don't want this paint just flooding everywhere. Okay. So let's try it and see what happens here. Hopefully, this color is not so different that when it touches the surrounding bits it's like oh my gosh like what is going on but it should tint the low spots and the high spots a little differently help us give there's a lot of different um what's the word mediums we could add here but i didn't ask you guys to buy those so i'm not going to use them normally if i was making my own for this kind of thing what i would do is add a little bit of flow aid Flow aid um, helps the surfaces be different, um, have different, it helps the paint have a lower surface tension. So it's going to flow into the cracks better than the mountain tops. So it's going to, to act more like we think of a, like a commercial wash. Okay, we're just putting this on everything. And we'll come back and we'll decide what we want to do after that. Okay. Like I said, the nice thing is the color's not so off from everything around it that if we get something, then it looks off. But we do want all these lacings to be a different color. That's why we didn't just, just leave them. Okay. We're just tinting them. And we can decide if we want to come back in and maybe re-highlight them in a few key places. But this just helps maintain a visual separation of it all. Okay, We can take this, this color and we can dab it in some shadows around. Create some more interesting colors. It's going to tint the rest of our browns just a little bit. We can... It's always good to add just more visual interest in your colors. Like little dashes of other colors are much more realistic. Much more realistic. Things are never like just brown and just whatever, right? Okay. So I think I kind of like where that ended up as far as that goes. But we need to re-highlight um, a few of these places just so that they grab. So we're going to take this original tone that we made down here which was linen white and uh, flesh tone we're going to mix just a little bit of our wash into that and then we're just going to come and we're just going to I think we need to brighten it up just a little bit there we go it was a little more linen white and we're just going to touch just a little bit and we're just kind of dabbing we're just kind of stippling okay And all it is, and just adding a little bit of interest. If all we did was paint these one things one color, they would look very flat. And that's not what we want. What we want, we don't want flat things, right? Whether or not you spend the time to Paint every rope. Curl up top is totally up to you. Um, if this was a like a show piece or, or a commission or something, I would be doing something like this. As it is right now, I don't really think I have the patience for that. So we're just going to kind of brush this across the tops. Catch some ridges. And let the 
implication. Do more than anything. More around here. All right, guys, he's getting pretty close. Um, I think the only other thing that we really need to do is um, probably the bone pieces up here, which we're going to do the same thing as we did last time. So we're just going to knock that out super quick. We're just, I'm just throwing out the bone triad. This is bone shadow, aged bone, and polished bone. I'm just putting that out on my palette up here. Um, the reason we didn't do that last time is it, uh, it was going to make doing the leather today us have to be kind of fussy with it. And I didn't really want to be fussy with it. Um, so we're just going to paint. This is probably going to take all of about two minutes. We're going to paint these as bone. I feel like it would be the most realistic thing one coat you know what we're gonna step it up we're gonna mix a little bit of our bone shadow in with our aged bone make an intermediate color apparently we're waiting for that color to dry you know what i think he's got a couple of little studs in here you can paint those metallic what do you guys say we're gonna add a little bit of our nightmare black on that dot, that dot will just assume that they're steel, nice blue steel. And then all we're gonna do is start mixing some of our that in there. We don't want too much of an intermediate color. These are, are pretty small guys. We don't have to do too many things. And we're just gonna touch the top, just gonna, the top right we're gonna do one more lighter color needs to be almost super light no okay and we're just gonna try to touch an even smaller area here okay that and then like that we're gonna keep this to the top side because we're gonna imagine it's hitting a little bit there and then we're just going to take some of our, our linen white here. And we're just going to put one little dot right there. And that'll make that look metallic, right? There you go. Doesn't that look a lot better than a little bit of metallic paint? Okay, we're going to come back now that that's dried. Take our aged bone, mix in a little bit of our bone shadow. And the goal here, oop, we're, we're doing this over here. The goal here is to not be super smooth. Bone has, you know, a texture to it. It's got that dry, worn look. We did it last week with um, a makeup brush. We're not going to bust that out just for this. Um, we're also going to touch while we're here. We got a little bit over on this. Since we're using these colors, we're going to take some of our aged bone now. And we're going to only come up. We're going to only come up from this side because that would be the side that's kind of in whatever. We're going to do just the tops here here take some of our polished bone which is that highlight for for that triad we're going to do just some some streaks again remember we're not looking for super super smooth we're focusing on the top you know half third we're going to add a little bit of our linen white into that and we're just going to catch the top here There we go. See how easy that was? Um, 
We should do a little bit with the nipples. The nipples! I feel like we didn't pay enough attention to them. Now we're just on fine finishing details. Taking a little bit of our clear magenta. Mixing it with a little bit of our skin tone here. Because he's going to have a little bit of a little bit of pink nipples here. And we're just going to give them just a little bit of attention. We don't want them to be like pink, pink, all right? All right? And then we're going to come back in and we're going to mix a little bit of white into that. And our linen white. And then we're just going to do a few dots highlights. We don't want him to have like nipples. We just did a few highlights there. Um, fingernails, toenails. Let's do them just a lighter off-white. So we're going to take some of our skin tone and our linen white and we're just going to make a real light color here. Um, do a couple of coats on them. Why? Oh, I'm a little too close, aren't I? Do, 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 do this. 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 We're going to add a little more. Let's add the bone color. We don't want to be too stark white. It'll catch too much attention. So we add a little bit of our polished bone in there. At this point, we're only going to focus on the tips of our nails. Don't repaint the whole thing, right? And only the ones that you can really see, okay? Um, oh, I didn't do his other toenails, did I? This, this. Again, don't spend a lot of time on the feet. Nobody cares about the feet. Oh, one of the toenail fingernails up there. Let me come back. Do this other one. Got to do the other feet. Right. And then come back in here with this color. All right, guys. I think we're done. Comments, questions. Do we like them? Do we hate them? Did we miss something? This is the point where I would just go back basically at this point and touch up change anything um you know i might um uh you know any spots that i didn't like the way it turns out i would i would you know handle those um this is also the point i would black line it's super super hard to black line on camera i'll tell you what guys i'm gonna do it just a little bit i'm not gonna do the whole figure black lining because you just really have to get up close and personal and it's just just ridiculously hard you know what i didn't do these straps dang it all right what did we paint those we did we did the off white right and then we did our second i hate it when like i think that i'm done and then i discover no 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 you're not really done. So we did them. Um, have this brown green. Then we came back in with some kind of lighter color, right? Have to let that dry. Keep waiting. Just trying to match these to these. 
like wild war rating. Um, this is what I use to line. This is black ink. Um, I find it way better to work with than um, paint for lining. I take a little bit of black ink. Um, I did not put that on the shopping list. I should have. I intended to kind of maybe line with with um, paint or whatever, but the fact of the matter is it just doesn't work nearly as well. Like not even close to as well. Um, this is a little bit of, no, there we go. This is a little bit of retarder. Um, you don't have to use this. It just makes it a little bit easier. Put a little bit of that in there. Just a brush full of water. Mix that up. I feel like there might have been something down in that cup. We'll see. There definitely was. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Um, Alright, this is about to the point where I can highlight these up. <laughs> okay. We'll call that good for now. All right, black lining. What you do? Take your brush, and all we're gonna do. Where in the world? Sorry, my hands suddenly have black ink all over them. I don't want to look at that. I don't want to risk. Getting that on something. Mm, just a second. All righty. All right. Black ink on the brush. Um, and then all we're going to do is we're just going to come through here. And we're gonna start laying down a thin line between everything. So see how that separated that? We're gonna lay thin line. Between things. And all this is really going to do is push our contrast here to 11. You don't have to go as stark as black. Like, I don't know that I'll end up with black there. I just wanted to kind of um, show that. I might. We'll see. That's probably a little stark for that, that spot, but it's easy to change. And all we're coming through is we're just making sure that every element supposed to be separate is nice and distinct so see how his skin here kind of blends into this cuff now it doesn't anywhere I don't always outline everything but I'll outline a the vast majority of things I need to fix his ankle there a little bit so especially like around here on the cuffs. When you're using that ink, you can get a super fine line. That's the advantage of the ink. And if you use a super fine line, it doesn't look um comic style. If you use a thicker line, it starts to look comic style. Maybe you're going for comic style. That's fine. 
So if we look here, see how these two cross, but you don't really have a sense of purpose of which one is in front of which, but you will after we, because we're going to add a little line there. Okay, now suddenly your brain knows which one goes under, which one goes over. It's those kind of little details that really start to add up. And if you're saying, this just doesn't look realistic, it kind of does. There's a lot, if you look at where your clothes meet on your body, and if you look at pictures of things, there's a dark line created by the shadows um, wherever things meet. So, yeah. You look almost all the top painters either do this as they paint or as a step afterwards. Um, Sergio Paolo just leaves a dark ring as he paints. So he does not go back and add one afterwards. So we'll come back in here. We'll reinforce a few of these places that we did already earlier. I'm just adding in this Instant contrast boost. Okay, get down in the hand here. I'm going to clean a lot of this hand up and make it so that, you know, you can get in between the fingers here. All right, that's probably about what we're going to call this guy. No, we might want to get a little bit. Oh, I'm getting between the fingers here. Uh, I like the line, like dark brown between the skin and the belt. Yeah, I will probably, to be honest, take that. Um, Not quite that dark. That's pretty dark. For that particular place. So, we come back here. I'm just going over this with some dark, with some brown. <laughs> but yeah, you can see that toned it down quite a bit. And come back in here with some skin tone. Clean that up a little bit. So yeah. You don't always have to line with black. A lot of times it is a good choice. Dark blue is a good choice. Um, I don't use a lot of black other than when I line. Um, you know, we're going to catch the ear here. A lot of times you're already going up against a pretty hard shadow line, so it just helps reinforce it. On the places where, you know, maybe there's not, no like up here, no consider a darker brown instead of a black. All right, guys, I think, I think we're going to call this guy pretty much done, and then... Would you guys be interested? I will probably take this guy at this point because I said this was not going to be an airbrush class. Um, I will probably take him. Well, I'm done as far as the class goes, but then I will probably finish him up with a little bit of airbrushing um, to smooth them, some things out kind of to the point that I like them. Um, is that something you guys would like to see on camera? Do you guys not have an airbrush and you just don't care? Like, what's the deal?
Hey, watching from New Zealand. Cool. It's probably what, um, almost three o'clock there, somewhere around there, something like that. All right, I can do that next week. That's fine. <laughs> oh. All righty. Well, then we will do a little bit of airbrushing next week, and uh, it won't be much. It's really just going to be to kind of bring the skin up to where I like it. Um, and uh, maybe a little bit of other stuff, but largely the skin. All righty, guys. All right, have a good one. 255, beautiful. All right, we will do some airbrushing then. All right, bye everybody.